Hey guys, welcome to the Shrews Your Biscuit podcast. I am your host, Shane Hinton, and what's that, what's that audio? What's that audio? I can hear something. What's that audio? No? Okay. Um, <laughs> I am here today. Um, this is the next installment of the Reduce to Clear Biscuits, um, which is a limited series uh, following Luke and Alex Yousefi, um on their embark on their new film that they're, they're directing, and they're here with me today. How are you guys? Good. Pretty good. Thanks. How yeah, about you, yeah, well, good. I can hear beeping. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, slightly, but I don't know where it's coming from. Neither. I'm gonna blame. Al- I'm gonna blame Alex because uh, with me also in the background, he's not saying much. Is Alex Whiteley? Um, he's my very, very, very old apprentice. Um, I'm teaching him everything he knows, and um, this time he's actually gonna be quiet for a change. So that's 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 really good. But um, I'm quite really ex- actually quite excited about this uh, episode because. Um, you guys have brought a very special guest with you, haven't you? Yeah, we have. Oh, what was that ping? <laughs> that, I'm I'm really sorry. That was my mobile phone. To oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 Perfect it, introduction. It, 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 my mobile phone, as as Luke and Alex will uh, uh, contest it, um, the battery went flat. So I all I've done is plug it in, and it now told me that it's ready to be switched on. Very bizarre. So, so here's here's Simon Fisher Becker, our, our guest. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> so I'm actually really stoked because I believe that um, uh, Simon was. I'm trying to remember now. Was it the second or third actor that you guys announced? Uh, he both technically because we announced second and third together. I was like, I'm sure it's the second or third. Um, but yeah, and I was just blown away because I was like, how, how? So I, was, I, guess, I guess that's the first question I got you know, to you guys collectively. I guess is how did that happen? How did you guys just run into each other? You know, um, um, uh, Luke. Uh, Luke is a Facebook friend, uh, along with uh, many, many others. And he just uh, sent me a message. Uh, he was uh, he had another film that it was going to have a a, a screening, a premiere uh, at a venue. Uh, was it Telford? Yeah. And uh, and he, he he invited me along. Now I had only recently moved to um, uh, where am I? Stafford. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I only recently moved to Stafford. I'd forget that as well, mate. <laughs> and uh, so Telford, uh, Telford is effectively a cough and a spit away. So I thought, wow, yeah. I got it. So I went along and I was very impressed with the film uh, that he showed. And I thought, yes, this uh, young chap is worthy of uh, having some sort of support. He then contacted me about uh, reduced to clear. And well, he just informed me of the character he'd like me to play. So I thought, well, okay. <laughs> and as, I, as, as I do anyway, my, uh, basically anybody who offers me anything, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need because because I don't need to read it. They've offered me it, so I don't. <laughs> I don't want to find a reason not to do it. And my and my, and my bank manager encourages me to have that attitude. <laughs> I think that's a really good philosophy in life, though, isn't it? Just mm. to say yes to everything, you know. Just like, yeah, yeah. You, know, you don't know where it's going to take you, do you? So, I'm well, it, it, uh, to be honest, it stemmed when I was at uh, drama college. Uh, everybody told me that I would be taken seriously until I was about forty, which in reality did sort of happen. And I got the impression that they thought I wasn't going to get any work. So I just applied for all sorts of things, and whoever offered me whatever, I just said yes to. So <laughs> which is quite good. you know, so I have a broad CV now, so I cover everything mm. from Shakespeare to Panto. So, so that's wow. it. Yes. So I was very impressed with what I saw. I thought he's a a, a youngster uh, setting out, and I was very young. I was very lucky when I started out. That some quite good names um, mm. helped me. Yes, you know, uh, I, sometimes they helped me uh, considerably within a production that I was working in, and other times the fact they would just drop my name into a conversation, mm-hmm. and I just thought, well, if I ever got into that position, uh, I I would get um, a bit of a kick about helping somebody else. And after all, <laughs> Luke, Luke and Alex are my employers. 
of tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> And I, would like to, right. I would like to think that when they do have a budget of, mm. sp of sprites, a, a large substance, uh, that they will remember me again. I'm sure they will. Yeah. Sure they will. <laughs> it's, all, it's all about opportunity, isn't it? And and sometimes you somebody just needs a break. And yes. just getting that break is is just it's just going to be the start of the rest of their lives, you know. Yes. And um, and you, and you've offered that to them. So so yes. so congratulations to you and, and thank you as well because not, not not many people, especially in this industry as well, would actually take the time out to do that. Um, so fair play to you, fair play to you. Um, but, but also also thank you because with lockdown, this has given me something else to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. Um, Alex, Luke, what? Apart from obviously the fact that Luke obviously knows uh, Simon already, um, what what part of his sort of uh, acting prowess, if you like, um, did, drew you to him to a certain role? Was it did you did you write the role for for him specifically in mind, or you know? I think he was a name we discussed while we were writing it. Am I yeah. right, Alex? But like, yeah, yeah. We wrote the manager, and I kind of said, "Oh, do you think we could get Simon Fisher Becker to do this?" And we kind of it a lot. We, that happened with a lot of the names that we got on board. The same with uh, you and Macintosh. It, it was like so, these these were dream casting that we yeah, were that joking about. Say, and then it is actually <laughs> our dream cast. We've got our dream cast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I think that was it. And we were um, we're both massive fans of Doctor Who. Oh yeah, where. I, where I think one of Simon's most well-known roles is, as you can probably see behind him, actually, with the <laughs> yeah, are, are, they, are they different like fan arts you've got there behind yes. you, Simon? Yes, it, it, it's it, it's what my husband calls it is my ego wall. <laughs> <laughs> ego wall. Alex has yes. got one of them as well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's a monopoly yeah. board behind him. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, because I I sell online. And having mm. the pictures behind me, they can they can sort of say, oh, oh, the, the one that's just over your right shoulder, the one that's, uh, or can you just move your massive body so we can see? <laughs> yeah. So Simon, I, I want to sort of delve into into you a little bit. Um, so what? Sounds <laughs> 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 like that. You throw me off, <laughs> <laughs> Simon. What? So go wind it right back, right back. So you know, I want to know, um, you know, what was young Simon like? What, you know, where did it, was was you a young kid that wanted to go into acting, or you know, did you? Where, you know, what, go from the beginning. Right. Well, young Simon was um, much smaller than he is now. He was a skinny. He was a skinny runt <laughs> and not very athletic. He was built like olive oil, and uh, and. Uh, I used to go, my grandparents took me to Panto, and of course I loved all that. And then I went to, I used to go to the cinema quite a bit, and I used to go to plays, and there was deep down a sort of fantasy, oh, I'd quite like to do this, but I didn't really have the courage. Mm. So I didn't take it seriously at all. Um, but deep down, I now know that uh, around the age of six or seven, I fancied the idea of being an actor. Uh, but uh, I followed the academic base, <laughs> as they oh. say, uh, and uh, uh, but it wasn't until I went into the civil service and then I was made redundant. Oh, so with that redundancy money, uh, I did a postgraduate uh, drama course, uh, uh, and then, as they say, everything followed there. It was oh. a bit of a struggle at first because nobody in my family were in the industry. And then some of my family just thought I was going through a phase <laughs> and, and thought that I needed medication. Uh, and there were times I thought they were right. But, uh, yeah, but, uh, but uh, no, but it gradually one thing leads to another. And uh, uh, I was actually very lucky having come out of college thinking I was going to get no work at all. My uh, When I went for auditions, my hit rate was quite high, one in four or five. So I actually, I had, for whatever reason, I had quite regular work. Mm. When you mention your family not being involved, am I right in thinking that later down the road, your mum joined you for a music video? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and just, to, just, to, just to give me that bit of whiplash there, um, for, my, for my mother's 60th birthday, so we're talking 20 years ago there, 
Um, I just I just uh, paid for her to have some professional photographs taken. And I then showed them to uh, my then photographic agent. And uh, she said, oh, would your mother like to be on the books? And of course, my mother uh, thought it went, you know, <laughs> don't you, don't you. I mean, blow me down. My mother got us all one in one. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, she ended up doing more work than I was. Uh, <laughs> but then the agent phoned and said, oh, uh, uh, your mother's been picked to do a pop video. Uh, do you think she could manage it? And I said, oh, I think so. And I rather tongue in cheek. I said, well, if I could go as her chaperone to give her confidence. Um, <laughs> anyway, the next thing I know, I get a call to say, well, no, they don't want you as a chaperone. They want you in it too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and it was um, Lila, who did the, the two brothers. I can't remember the names now. It'll come to me. It's all right. I, I have got uh, a brain rot this lockdown, and I can never remember. <laughs> yeah, again, I know that. I know that feeling. My my yeah. word recall at the moment is rubbish. I Oasis, say, yeah. sorry, Oasis. Oasis. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a, it was an Oasis pop video. My mother uh, suddenly is in a pop video with <laughs> Oasis. As you uh, do. And and. Uh, and um, it was just so so very yeah so uh, so so that's Luke is how my mother got there into a pop video, <laughs> and I I think I probably picked up on that from your book, which I just brought as yeah. hand as a prop. There you go, as your your own promotion oh. there. <laughs> yes. My Dalek has a puncture. It's is easy. It's easily followed by my Dalek has another puncture. <laughs> <laughs> And now we've well, just got to make as, as enough memorable an experience for you on Reduce to Clear to get a, to get a shout in the third one. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I mean the person who wrote it. The third one is Let Zygons Be Zygons, which really picks up on what's interesting from my stage show and from my books. Um, uh, people have commented and said the things I do and say, they have experienced themselves. And so I've sort of picked up on that So. Mm. And most of it is people really moaning because they're in a certain situation, and there is and and my grandmother used to say, so, "Look, come on, let bygones be bygones." You know, there we go, there we go. Yes, that happened. That was yesterday. Goodbye. Move on. <laughs> so, 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 Simon. Um, yes. Obviously, sorry. you, you say it, sorry. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. That's, that's what I like about these sort of podcasts. I, I, I we don't write anything down when, when we first started doing this sort of stuff al used to write almost like an itinerary by this yeah. time we need to do this and he was very very organized and he, he used to get a little bit obsessive about it but then eventually we kind of grew and kind of developed into this sort of um uh, this sort of setup where it's just an informal chat and and we actually mm. prefer that we like the way it sounds and we like the way the conversation just flows and does take these little detours and you know you, yeah. you actually think about questions that you wouldn't have thought about on a on a more formal setting so yeah crack on me if you want to you want to you know go on for the detour then just do it you know <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I love doing these things if you happen to have guessed i can talk for the nation for at least <laughs> a year. um but um i like the conversation yeah and as you say Things come up and it just bounces from one mm. place to the other. And you suddenly but, remember uh, stuff as well, like you know, little words yeah. and things like that will just spark off a memory, and you're like, oh, actually, I remember, you know. And um, and that's one of the things which you know we thrive on with the, with the biscuit as well, because um, mm. we're, we're talking about local people and like you know local businesses and things like that. You know, they suddenly remember stuff that they've completely forgotten about because they've been so busy running their business, they have they completely forgotten about when it started and stuff like that. You know, mm. so sometimes it's quite interesting to see the development of that conversation go on. Mm. Um, but bringing it back, <laughs> um, obviously you were saying that you, know, you, you had uh, quite a lot of luck um, in your acting career and it's sort of you, you're never really short of work. So was it just a bit of a chance of luck to get into the realms of Doctor Who and Harry Potter and stuff? Or was that just a, a natural sort of you know incline up to, to get to those sort of level of acting? Well, the, the Harry Potter and Doctor Who tell two different sort of stories. Uh, first of all, when you start out, the hope is whatever job you do will help you along and it'll either it'll pay the mortgage uh, uh, or um, it'll sort of increase your status. That's what you start out hoping. Uh, in reality, it doesn't quite work that way. Uh, but uh, with uh, Harry Potter, for example, uh, I was um, 
asked to go for an audition uh, for Harry Potter, for the fat fryer of Hufflepuff House, and um, ended up I had to go to four. There were 20 wow. roly, there were 20 roly poly actors squeezing into the smallest room in London. Uh, and then that was whittled down to 13 and then down to seven and then down to three. So there was a lot of, a lot of things going on. And then eventually it, the role came to me, which was brilliant. I then found that it was a four film contract. I uh, had to sign four contracts. Um, and we did a lot of work uh, in the first five weeks or so. Uh, but then when it came to the premiere of the first film, most of what I did was cut out. Oh, uh, And in fact, I sort of joke with drama students now that um, that uh, my name in the credits is on screen longer than I am. Uh, there, it, are those deleted scenes available, by the way? I don't, I, if they are, please let me know if anybody knows where I could find them. It'd be lovely. Because we did a lot of work. We worked with Rick Mayo, uh, who was cast as um, Peeves, the poltergeist, and he got cut out altogether. So I count myself lucky that I was able to grab mm. <laughs> a few seconds that I had. And that was an example. And I will admit I was very low after that. Uh, and uh, uh, I didn't want to give up. I'm never, uh, I never give up on anything. Um, uh, but what, uh, from that point, uh, I changed the psychology in my head. I said, right, from now on, my acting is my profitable hobby. Uh, and uh, from that, it, it really was quite remarkable. And then it was 10 years later that um, I had a complete opposite experience with the casting of Dorian Moldovar and Doctor Who, in that I went for the casting. There were seven of us that they saw. Three others I know personally, very, very good actors, so I knew it wasn't going to be easy. But three days later, I just got the phone call to say I got the role. And then, so that, how did that feel for you? Were you just like, what? Oh, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm a Harry, I'm, I'm a Doctor Who fan, so that was, yeah. I was, a, I was just a tingy bit, bit uh, disappointed that at the time it was just this one scene in one episode. But you know, I was glad to do it, and so we were talking about luck. I was lucky that Stephen Moffat wrote, wrote a character for a large actor. I was lucky that I was the act chosen. I was then lucky that the image of Dorian uh, just hooked into the uh, uh, psychology of the fans. And because of the fans, I got to do three other episodes. Mm. Uh, and um, and <laughs> I ended up on this uh, sort of sci-fi circuit, which is worldwide. Mm -hmm. uh, and from that, I developed a stage show. Uh, and from that, a publisher attended one of the shows and told me I had to put it in book form. So that's that's the trilogy. And it was none of it was designed, it just evolved. Mm. And I now get, um, I'm now, or was until recent events, uh, a visiting tutor at colleges who turned me down. Ah, ah, <laughs> I walk through the yeah. doors and I go, oh, fuck you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but also I get to do very bizarre things. One of the most bizarre things I was asked to do I was paid to go to Tulsa uh, and open a vodka bar. <laughs> so, but the highlight, of, the highlight of what I can say, and I say to students now, that is you have to be prepared and your good fortune might come tomorrow or it might take 30 years. Mm. Because up to, up to Doctor Who, I had to um, audition for absolutely everything. And then after Doctor Who... The producers and directors were just asking if I was available. Well, you know, Ricky and, Gervais and, like Luke and Alex, really. Ricky Gervais yeah. didn't make his money until his forties, you know. So, like, yeah. it's it, you're, you're right. I mean, I think that it's all about how how much effort you put in. It's not necessarily about how long it's going to take, is it? You know. Um, and um, and I, I I personally, me personally, I think if if the little fame I have now, uh, I tend to use the phrase of following. Had it come to me earlier, I might not have been prepared to deal with that. Yeah, I don't know, but I'm very grateful for what I. Yeah, have. and in what you were saying about the convention circuit, I found fairly recently a photo from about five years ago, uh, wherein I had travelled from Shropshire to West Bromwich to a convention to meet you and get a photo. And it's so weird now to be like, "Hey, we're working with you," <laughs> when I like you were the main draw to that 
convention. I think that's where I bought your first book. Well, and yeah, that's very that's very kind of you to say. Um, it you is can't a very. Me remember what convention it was. <laughs> yeah. People ask me why I do the conventions, and first of all, if it wasn't for the fans, I wouldn't have had a new bathroom. So, uh, uh, so I want to thank them. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, um, yeah. I was just going to say, like, obviously you've worked with some pretty obviously quite renowned directors obviously in the past um is it any different working with actual fans now the process of working on uh, uh with students and those who recently graduated well the the slight difference is that they're still they've still got the energy to achieve and even experiment a bit more and do something mm -hmm. slightly different I don't wish to. Uh, some as some of the more experienced directors can be a little jaded, and I don't mean that nastily. It's just uh, they can be, you know, maybe they haven't been able to get a project that they would really like to get their teeth into. Um, there are so see in the industry, and what people outside of it don't realise is to get any project off the ground, there are so many people involved, and uh, of course. The people who actually provide the money, they they must be allowed to have some say in mm. who they want to cast and yeah. how the project works. You know, because they're not going to put the money in knowing it's going to fail, are they? No, uh, no. But for the artists, that can be a little restrictive. Mm. And I can also so, imagine as well if 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 you've got an experienced director, um, they know what they know what they're trying to achieve. They know how to make it happen. They're not interested in anything else. They're like, I've got an image in my head. I know what I know what I need to do, and that's what I'm doing. You know, where someone that's necessarily, you know, not might not necessarily be as experienced, like for example, Luke, um, who's up and coming, who, who's got, you know, who's, who's still good, but you know, don't won't hasn't got you know 30, 40 years of of uh, director experience because he literally hasn't been alive that long. <laughs> you know, um, you know, is a bit more sort of inclined to take that take those that advice and sort of think actually, okay, we'll run with that and see, see how that works. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't yeah. work. You know, it doesn't matter. It's, um, it's, it's a, on a personal basis. I just like working, uh, yeah. and um, if uh, Steven Spielberg doesn't want me next week, then. Luke and Alex are welcome to have me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's um because I mean, yeah, you've worked with like some incredible directors because obviously, like, with you've got like Tom Hooper, I is it Columbus who did Harry Potter? Um, uh, yes, yeah, so yeah. I, 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 the things, the, the ghosts were actually with the second director. Uh, I was gonna wonder, David McDonald, David yeah. McDonald, but uh, but yeah. Just you go with the flow. It's very exciting, and being on a film set is very exciting. I'm because of my age and my grey hair. I started out in theatre, so that'll always be my the thing I want. You know, to actually hear the crowd respond. Yeah, and they are, the, although they're very very similar, they are two different sort of um, the two different processes, aren't they? Yeah, disciplines. Yeah, that's the right word. Um, I think that um, both have their pros and cons. Yes. Um, and I don't think that any one actor that, that, that sort of swayed one way or the other is necessarily any better or worse. Because, um, yeah. because like you said, it's like, you know, it's oranges and tomatoes, isn't it? It's, it's a bit in the same way, but they're both edible, you know? <laughs> Do you know I mean, the, the main thing with live theatre is once the show starts, you actually have control over your performance. Mm. Mm -hmm. you know, so unless a light falls from the ceiling and crashes on the stage, you're in full control. Uh, whereas with television and film, you're not in control with what actually ends up in the final product. Mm. And that can be a bit soul-destroying. I would say those who worked on stage, particularly in comedy, they are better film and television actors in that they're used to timing. Yeah. Uh, and especially if they're working on a comedy or if their character has got a funny line, uh, they can time it so that the audience watching it at home can have their little giggle. Yeah. Those who haven't worked on stage, you find that you don't get a chance to appreciate the joke that's just happened. But, I remember um, um, I was I was watching uh, something about on about the, the like the art of comedy kind of thing. And yeah. I can remember um, it was it's more sort of like stand up comedians sort of uh, thing. And um, and he was saying about listening to the crowd 
whenever when they're doing their sort of stand up because you can hear the laugh go all the way to the back and then come back <laughs> and it goes and it's, it's on the way but you know it's getting that timing right of it coming back that when you deliver the next line you know and, and it's about when they pause that's what they're listening for and i was yeah. like I, I didn't even it didn't even even occur to me that it was that complicated you know um yeah, they only develop that uh, through experience the more you mm. do uh, it is do 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 and and it's not just in the arts i think in any profession yeah anyone absolutely. who trains for any profession it's not until you actually start doing the job that you actually learn how to do it so, so going yeah. to college and reading the books is all well and good but in reality it's very very different i can remember um when we did the comet salopia in shrewsbury um alex always takes the mickey at me for this but we had uh, jamali maddox on who was um who is a stand-up comedian um and he's done some awesome things he's been on tv and stuff he's done lots of documentaries and you know he's done lots of work and he came on and we asked him um what was your advice to anybody who's wanting to get into comedy or, or anything really with regards to like you know media sort of stuff and um and he just said just do it and he said yes. that, that's literally it he said just do it he says you know if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't just do it you know and that sort of really rung true to me and that's why i sort of come back to it quite a bit when talking about this sort of thing because so many people have so many skills and talents and all sorts of stuff and they hide it because of being embarrassed or scared or not really knowing how to reach out to to get into it maybe or whatever mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean just just do it in it just get mm -hmm. just get on with it I, you know? I i agree with you totally um uh, uh I've worked with some extremely talented people, far better than I, uh, but uh, they haven't had work that has given them some form of notoriety, which is very sad. But they work and they have a successful career. And uh, nowadays, the assumption by some people is if they're not on television, they can't be any good. Well, mm -hmm. I, can, I can tell you that is the worst philosophy of all time. <laughs> Because there are some very, very talented people of mm. all of all mediums of the arts, and some very awful people on television as well. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I, I, current news excluded, obviously. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> I, I'm glad. You, yeah. <laughs> knowing, knowing, how, knowing how difficult it is to achieve some things, I I hesitate to criticise anyone, but uh, I do occasionally think another actor could have done a job, not done the job better. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I gotta. I gotta ask. Um, I'm sat backstage. I'm listening to this amazing conversation. I thought I've gotta ask this. Last time um, I spoke about this, we talked about Josh Trank, the uh, the very unfortunate director who went from Chronicle to uh, Fantastic Four, who's now just on the um, the inspired Capone movie, which I watched the other day. Which is uh, you know. when it comes to acting, directing, creating, uh, whether it's whether you are at the start of your career. Or at the end, is there such thing as flogging a dead horse? Have you got to just when you're in a, in a sort of bad run of things, is it just a case of persevering and just keep working, or have you got to go back and sort of um, look look at change the game plan a bit? Um, flogging That's a dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because, because at the end of the day, when you're starting out, you 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 have no real control. Uh, over what work you do other than you choose not to do it mm. and each project is very exciting and there and especially in the days when you need to needed to get together some sort of show reel and the promise that you would get a copy of it so that you could put add it to your show reel you would just do whatever work is on offer um and whether the project is, is successful or not you can't really judge because uh what is the formula? Hmm. Uh, what really, there was the original, uh, what's it called? Uh, Titans. It had a it had a huge cast: uh, uh, Lawrence Olivier, Dorothy Chewton, John Gilbert. You had every single British name that you can think of, and so you would think that that would be a very successful film, uh, but it wasn't. You and uh, it's not always easy to work out what might not work so because it didn't do well at the box office people think that it's a flop but if as an actor whilst you're doing that project you're learning something you're making new contacts uh you're uh, 
earning some money and you're enjoying what you're doing, that I think that's all that counts. There are times you do something you think, who do I have to sleep with to get off? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but um, as you can imagine, there won't be very many opportunities for me to have that. <laughs> um, I mean, I think I think with everything, isn't there? You, you do get to a point where you have to, you know, everybody with any type kind of work, I suppose, you kind of get to a point where you you just sort of sit there and you think, what am I doing? What am I doing? In my life? Well, I do yes. it on a daily basis, you know. <laughs> yeah. myself, what am I uh, doing? In my life? Yes, sometimes, and I know, having done quote proper jobs, I know that feeling. Yeah, uh, and uh, I also know the feeling of having a bad day at the office. Uh, but as an actor in particular, if you have a bad day at the office, the complex is I'll never work again. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. and the bad day, like, isn't it? you know, and you have off days. There are days you can't speak properly. Your mouth, you, you get all tongue twisted or or something or you keep on missing your mark or whatever. Mm. Uh, and, and you feel you're the problem because that's <laughs> there's the other thing is sometimes they'll go right uh, cut right and then there's a lot of people huddling in the corner and there's always <laughs> and then somebody will look over it to you and of course you start thinking oh my god they're talking about me what have i done wrong <laughs> what, did I do wrong? what did i do wrong and in fact it actually turned out there was something wrong with the lighting or yeah. something wrong with the sound but they don't tell you that you find that out later so <laughs> so, you, so you start getting paranoid but uh and and also well, also, and particularly with Doctor Who, what I found is if they booked you, they actually assume you can do the job. You obviously, <laughs> you, know, they, you know, they've convinced you that you've convinced them in your audition this person for it, and he can do the job. And so, more recently, and particularly with television, where the turnaround is, is, is you know, you get dizzy. Um, there's very little conversation. I mean, at Drama College, you have the opportunity to talk with the directors and the producers about. Your character mm. no no compensation at all uh, and the next thing you know you're sitting in the chair and somebody shouts action what, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah you just sort yeah. of expect it to just turn up and just uh yeah just and, and if, 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 they're happy with what, if they're happy with what you've done they just leave things as they are uh, mm. occasionally they might say uh could you give us an option and of course i used to think oh god they didn't like what i did <laughs> yeah but it turns out they did like what i did but they genuinely did just want another option for them to choose. So yeah. that's a that, that's okay. Yeah, I've uh, always I've always found that when I've uh, with the directing I've done, it's just been like if you if as a director you've got the very specific image in mind of how you want things to be done, even if the way the actor does it is ten times better, there's still that bit in your head that goes, I still want to film it the way that yeah. I had it as backup. Yeah. And I yeah. think that that's important, but it obviously depends on how how the director expresses that. I imagine some directors would probably say that in a much more horrible way than others. Oh, no, it, it's very exciting, and when if you're with a lovely team who gets on with each other, it's 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 it's. It, well, I was going to say it's like a holiday, but that's not quite right. You're yeah. expected <laughs> to turn up, know your lines, hit your spot, don't bump into the furniture, and above all, don't be a prat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the way of guaranteeing the way of guaranteeing less work is being a prat yeah you know you hear all these stories about divas and things like that i can absolutely tell you that is disliked terribly and i suppose the only time it's tolerated is if the diva is uh is a huge huge name that mm. the name alone will just drag in the money obviously yeah. no names mentioned have you yeah. worked on set with divas like that? Um, this is a bit when he says he's the diva. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, joking apart, I, as as many people know, uh, I have mobility issues, uh, and uh, and so all I request is that people take that into account. Mm. And when I ask that, I do feel, oh, my God, am I coming over as a diva? But no, I have worked. I, I won't say, uh, I won't say what, what project I was on. But um, we, were in the, we were in the green room. That's not my phone. That's one of your phones. Any of you got a phone going on? Wasn't me. So, um, no. Um, 
I was uh, I was doing a project. We were in the green room and we were sort of relaxed, having a chat about things. And then this other guy came in and he just pushed over the, opened the doors, you know, and he went like this to a guy and said, "Tea." <laughs> he just went, "Tea." Uh, and we, I, and, can't, I can't say on this on this podcast what I would have said to him. Unknown to him, the person who got up to get the tea was the director. <laughs> but he just got up and he said, "Milk and sugar." He said, "Yeah." And he went out, and of course, we're all thinking, "Oh my god!" And when the guy came back with the tea, the director came back with the tea. He then said, uh, "Could I just have a quick word outside?" So he went outside, and we never saw that guy again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he was just missing the Wow. Fair dude. Uh, what, what, a, <laughs> what a stupid person. And I don't understand why people have those sort of attitudes. Uh, uh, but in the main, the really big, I've been very lucky. I've worked with some good talent. Mm. And in the main, they are absolute lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. It's those who are less competent in themselves who can be a bit awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I did have, I did have one actress say to me, "But don't you know who I am?" And um, so I said, "I, I <laughs> what was the character she was like?" Oh, uh, I said, "Yes, your Lady Margaret." <laughs> well, she didn't talk to me for the rest. Of <laughs> <laughs> how, how to make friends and influence people um, <laughs> there's a beautiful sorry there's a beautiful quote from um the disaster artist this the, the story of uh the making of the room being the worst so famously one of the worst movies ever made uh and i don't know if this was a thing that was actually said by the actress or whether in the biopic they added it but it stuck in my mind which is uh, people like us, even the worst day on a movie set is better than the best day doing anything else. Would you agree, um, Simon? Yes. Um, without being a bit, but without being too tough, I do know that at the end of every day, uh, no matter how well or bad it's gone, I, I sit in my bed at the end at night and I say, "This is what I do." And that's it. And I'm happy and I'm content. And in the main, I've been very, very lucky. Uh, the, uh, I've had some wonderful, extraordinary jobs to do. There was a series called Puppy Love, uh, uh, which um, my wife in the series uh, were, was a doggy trainer. She trained puppies. So hence Puppy Love. That was it. But there's a production, that's an example of a production who took into account my mobility issues. And so they wrote my character as being acrophobic and just stayed and lived in a caravan. And wow. it's that sort of thing, that's the sort of thing I appreciate. Also, there, there were lots of animals involved. And so we used to film each scene without the animals. And then we were told, we'll do it again and just go with it. Because, of course, the animals won't have read, uh, read this script and damn them, they don't <laughs> want to learn it. Uh, so, you, so we were just told, just go with it. And it, <laughs> and it was uh, quite good fun, really. Is there anywhere we can watch Puppy Love? Because I've seen you talk about it before, but I don't know. Yes, um, I, I think you can get it on iTunes now, and I think you can get it on YouTube. Uh, oh, yeah. It was, I mean, it's another story, see, um, at the time, it was... Um, you guys are starting out doing something new. Um, it was one of five uh, projects that the BBC commissioned what they call a non-broadcast pilot. Uh, yeah. Uh, a non-broadcast. And, and from the five, they then choose, chose two to go into series. And very fortunate for us, we went into series. And so then the non-broadcast pilot became the first episode. Mm. And then it was commissioned for a second series. Whoopee! Excitement, excitement. And about three weeks before we were due to start, uh, HBO or some other American company uh, bought the rights to make their own version of it. And so oh. it didn't happen for us, which is very mm. sad. sad. But so, I, 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 yes. So, Simon, um, yes. You say you're working with students at the moment. So are you doing teaching now or? 
no, 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 no. It's um between jobs, uh, between jobs, uh, if a, a student project comes up and they contact me and I'm available and it's not going to be too much of a stretch for me, um, uh, then I'm quite happy to take part. And it's always on the grounds of subject to availability. Yeah. I try and let them down. Uh, uh, and also uh, a lot of colleges ask individuals to go in and give talks. So that's how I got this title of visiting tutor. Mm. <laughs> and uh, my talks, most of it is based on my one man shows because uh, some, you know, some teachers at certain colleges have seen it and said this, this would be ideal for our students. Uh, I've become a patron of a couple of charities and uh, I'm often asked, particularly when I go abroad, because I'm already out there, they ask me if I, if I if, could you stay on an extra week and uh, do a couple of things for us. Uh, so, while um, you're here, can you, uh, yeah, <laughs> one of them. Well, and you know, just the smack in the in the happy sacks is if the, if, you, if they won't pay for you to come from London, but whilst you're there, they love you, adore you, or the best thing there is. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. So, so is that is that um because it's uh, no one uh, IMDb. It's it says you're doing some public speaking. Is that is that similar? That's that yes. Something else? That's something else. <laughs> on IMDb. God, I don't know who it is. Yes, I do public speaking, but it's based on um, whatever the, a charity asks me to talk about. Right now, some people, particular and particularly in America, I I actually got a booking. Can you please come? We don't care what you talk about. We just like your voice. <laughs> <laughs> so. You know, not too sure how to take that, really. And for a guy that likes talking, then uh, oh. <laughs> it's a perfect job, really, isn't it? Yes. Uh, no, uh, yeah. You should you uh, should really just try and pick, like, the most controversial thing to come and talk yeah, about. <laughs> just, just milk it. <laughs> uh, the, the, the thing is, I'm not really a stand-up comic, but I do accept that I, I make people laugh, mm. as I've witnessed this evening. So... Uh, I, it's just the way I, I, I still think one of the the most times I've laughed is that video you put on your YouTube of you laughing last year. Oh, I love it. You had a sixty <laughs> second video of you laughing, and it was the most contagious thing ever. <laughs> I need to find this now. Ow. It is. Alex, it is can you find that video? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's on my. I can't remember how long ago it was, really, but it was. It's on my YouTube channel. And uh, yes, I just thought, what should I do today? Uh, and I said, oh, I'll, I'll just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just I started up. Up. <laughs> 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 and I carried on like that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yeah, expect but, that. I did not yeah, expect but, that. But I have to say also, uh, I uh, inadvertently uh, say things which turn out to be quite controversial. So that upsets people, but, but I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, Are you find it or not? <laughs> Wait. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> 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 when did you do that? Was that during lockdown by any chance? <laughs> Oh no no! It was before then. Uh, I think, I, 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 it's interesting because you've got my ego wall behind me there. I see there. It was my bookshelves. Well, my you can't see them now unless I move it. But my bookshelves are to my side now. So yeah, yeah so that was <laughs> that was some time ago. <laughs> I mean, it was wow. just something to do. Uh, but that, that's uh, brilliant, though, isn't it? Because you just you just having a laugh. It's just you know, and it's something which which actually gets. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's something which, which, which kind of you kind of forget a little bit, right? That that, that people that do act, you know, that are acting on TV and stuff are just normal people, and and they do just mm. you know have a laugh. They have got a sense of humor. Most of them do, um, you know, and, and they are just normal human beings, you know, and like, um, and it's really nice seeing stuff, seeing stuff like that because you're just you clearly you know don't take yourself too seriously and you just have a laugh and that's what life's all about isn't it uh, yeah uh, i'm very serious about my work but i certainly can't take myself seriously at all <laughs> uh, and uh, for years and years and years i've had to deal with people telling me i don't have a proper job i've also experienced conversations where people just assume that if you're in a film for 10 minutes it only took 10 minutes to film Luke's just had like an eye twitch then. <laughs> I, I, always, uh, I always try to find a silver lining in any situation. And the thing that really pleases me is that during lockdown, who do the public go to? Mm. They go to actors and singers and dancers and anybody in the arts just to keep themselves entertained. So we have now become essential. Mm. So, so I, I like to, to stick up several digits for those in the past. <laughs> I mean, there was a, there was another one that I got a bit uh, controversial. It was um, uh, "Go Out and Kill Grandma." I think it was called. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I can't remember. But you, if on my podcast, you'll find it. So it'll be it will be since uh, it'll probably be April or May. I did it. The, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Uh, let's all go out and kill grandma. Let's all go out and kill grandma. Let's all go out and kill grandma. Let COVID polish her off. Let COVID polish her off. Let COVID polish her off. Oh, let's all go out and kill grandma. <laughs> and inherit whatever she's got. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was I that was I can't beautiful. see why that came across controversial. At all. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing that Alex has said for this entire podcast. <laughs> that. <laughs> and um, uh, and, and uh, I, I must admit, I did it as a joke. Yeah, uh, but I got a lot of stick for doing that, and, I'll, and I, I hope imagine. I can get too much stick now. Saying that, and, um, but I guess, I guess it. it 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 shows how much respect people have for you that they then ha have the offense afterwards i think if that makes sense well, <laughs> like um, in the in the fact that they they hold your views up high enough to be bothered by them no, um, I, yeah, I, I, know I get i get po very positive feedback but just occasionally i i mean i did recently i put up a message about the harry and meghan uh, interview Somebody made some statement, and all I said was, "I think we need to know both sides of the story." You know, before yeah. you make comment. That's all I said. Uh, no, somebody's going to come round and beat me up. Apparently, uh, awesome. yep. so so I responded it to it in my latest vlog, which I put up today. So I read that. uh, that's that's on my watch later to watch tonight. Yeah. I, I really, I really, your your vlogs are just really fascinating so to anyone who hasn't seen them and what i've got like five ten minutes to spare they're always just a great great thing to, to i like to. to put in something that's quite interesting i like to put a fact in and but and i also like to respond to those who've written to me and be, very often people do write to me and say oh in your next vlog who do you mention blah 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 um the issue is that uh, uh you know, many people will write in, but they only ask a limited number of questions. Mm. They all ask the same question, in other words. But never mind. Mm. You know, it gives me something to do. Uh, <laughs> Simon, uh, because, it's, yes? it's just, just sort of steering it a little bit now. Um, you can conduct a, a choir. <laughs> well, yes, you see, now, ah, ah, here how, we go. How, how does that happen? At school, I was more of a musician than an actor. Uh, and um, um, long story short, the first time I conducted, uh, I conducted the school band at a summer fete because the music teacher at the time uh, was ill. <laughs> uh, so I was pushed forward, you see. So, so that's it. And I can tell you, actually, conducting is a lot more difficult than you think. Because the sensation for the person with the stick waving their arms around is that they're trying to drag a cart horse. You know, if the, if the conductor follows the musicians, the musicians follow the conductor, it gradually gets slower and slower and slower and it comes to a mm. stop. 
So then from that, I, uh, uh, after school and whilst I was a civil servant on Saturday mornings, I became a warden of a music centre. And uh, in one year, 1987, I think it is, there was the Zeebrugge uh, ferry disaster. Now, Alex and uh, Luke, and I suppose you must be showing you're too young to remember it, really. Uh, but uh, a ferry. Thank you for uh, that. I appreciate it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, back end, the back end of a ferry opened and it got flooded and it sunk, killing most of the people on board. And some of the people were members of this music center that I was a warden of, including uh, the sons and daughters of some of the teachers. Mm. And uh, suddenly other students came to me and said, could we put together an orchestra to do a concert to raise money for the Zeebrugge Fund? So that's how it started. Mm. And uh, no internet, no emails in those days. But, no I, managed to, no I, but I managed to get a 144 piece orchestra and a full, uh, an audience that filled a church that hadn't been filled since 1872. Um, and we did this concert and it was brilliant. So that's how it started. Mm. And then from then, uh, uh, people asked, oh, could you stand in for our conductor? Could you conduct this concert and that concert? And that's how I did it. And it was absolute, absolute fun. Mm. Uh, and I entered a couple of comments. So that's on my IMDB page. That I could have to, so oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until I did Doctor Who that I suddenly had a Wikipedia page. I know, I was looking at your Wikipedia page. And that Wikipedia yeah. page is, is, has, I have no control over it. No, when it, no. Uh, when it first came out, there was a photograph of me, uh, and they had lots of information on there that was incorrect. And I tried to edit it only to find I had to put in a code. Well, I don't know who, what, uh, I don't know what the code is. Because I didn't create it, and I to be honest, I'm really <laughs> what's the weirdest lie you've seen about yourself on the internet? <laughs> uh, the, oh, there's several things really, but the one that the, the one that was a little controversial, the main one that's controversial, is suddenly I uh, got an email from a friend that said congratulations in the box. I opened it up, and there was a link to I think they're called Cult Box, and they got this thing saying Doctor Who actor to appear in Game of Thrones. <laughs> And there was a wacky great big picture of me as Dorian. Now, I had gone for an audition to play this certain character, and I was recalled, and then there was a third recall, and then I didn't get it. Right? Mm. But there was this thing that came up. That... So I contacted my agent, and I said, is this something I should know? And so I told her the story, and she got a little worried because she thought it might upset Nina Gold, who's the casting director. Nina Gold is a very big... Yeah, Nina Gold's wonderful done professional and, and um, there was that. So then, uh, Kim said she thinks that somebody might have got sight of the recall sheet and saw my name and just assumed I get it. But in, in practice, in reality, it was David Very who was also in Doctor Who, he played a Slovene. So, all it mm. is that they got the wrong picture. Is, uh -huh. But I started going to conventions and, and doing these sort of things, and people would say, and what's it like working on Game of Thrones? I don't know, <laughs> <I'm> not <clear. laughs> I know. But the weirdest thing of all is if you type in uh, Wiki Thrones and put my name in, it'll come up and say that I was cast, but then it was recast. <laughs> I was off the road, which is a complete and complete nonsense <laughs> so simon with regards to um the this this production here the reduced the reduced clear what's your what what's your hope for it you know what what what's your sort of image of what's you know where do you want it to go where do, you know, do you know what i mean yes um um on, uh, to answer two sections there first of all when i read it and they i had in my mind what i would wear and what's interesting, uh, they sent me a photograph of somebody dressed like they would like the manager to wear, and it's more or less what I had in mind. Mm. So that, that tells me from the start that we're going to get on very well and we're more or less on the same wavelength. And uh, as for where it will go, I would, I would love it if, um, if it, it got onto the uh, short film circuit 
and it won awards and it got some form of notoriety. I would love the idea that somebody like the BBC or or would pick up a short film, uh, and I wish them luck with that. Now, mm. I do know a lot of people contact me, and, and they do think having a Doctor Who actor in their project um, will help that. If mm. that is the case, then I'm very pleased to do that, but I'm not so sure. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm, 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 I'm not so sure. You could have the opposite effect. Oh, good God, it's him again. <laughs> oh, God. Delete, delete, delete. Have, have, we, have, we said, um, have we actually said who you're playing today? <laughs> um, I mean, there's not too much we can say about it. No, I, I know, I know, I know <laughs> that uh, I know there is the um, official secrets act and everything, which, in which I'm, I'm used to. Every signed project. in blood, of course, you know. <laughs> well, I, I've got a choice. I could tell you, but then I'd have to come and kill you. Oh right, it's you know, yeah. So there's that, but um, uh, I, I have a pivotal role. I think. Would you say that is? Yeah, correct? I think yeah. so. Yeah, pivotal. And I'm so, very uh, to be. So honest. Alex, do, do, do you want to do? As soon as you've said next to nothing this entire podcast, because <laughs> because yeah. uh, we've been we've been talking for too, too way too much. Um, do you want to sort of just outline? Obviously, I know that you can't say too much, but sort of just a rough what's it, what Simon's going to be doing. He's the manager. No, that, oh, okay, fair enough. Like, <laughs> 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 the tower with him. <laughs> yeah, so in credited, I think. I think second lead is is pretty is, is what we're saying. Um, it's a recurring recurring throughout. Whereas a lot of a sorry, I'm not talking. I, I yeah, shut me up. <laughs> 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 Look, guys. Um, we I think we have run out of time. Al's tapping his watch. Um. <laughs> so we need to, we're going to have to start wrapping up Simon where can people find you if they want to uh, contact you or watch your content or um, they could go to my Facebook page just type in my name there are two sites but the main one to go to the banner is of my ginger and white pussycat who died a few years ago oh. so you know it's me and just come on as a uh, send a friend request and we can go from there uh, you can also uh, go to YouTube and just type in my name and my channel will come up and you'll see some of the vlogs I've done. Uh, and like your good selves, I'm currently the co-host. <laughs> yes, I'm currently a co-host of um, uh, the No Name Trivia Show, which is really aimed at the audience who like trivia facts, and mm. questions, and, things. and that intersperses uh, guest appearances and have conversations with them uh, and uh, it, though it is based in Australia so in the UK you have to watch it at the moment you have to watch it at 9 o'clock in the morning but you know, if you sign up you can then follow it and yes. get the yeah. recordings later so uh, that yeah. is the No Name Trivia Show um, though I need to update it there's my website fisherbecker.info uh, and uh and you can find me on my IMDb page. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, Luke, do you want to drop your digits? Uh, yeah. Um, I've been trying to real trim down the plugs that I normally have. <laughs> um, although, uh, you can find me on Twitter at llama underscore bottle zero. Uh, so, anyone who hasn't got me there, I don't know whether you've got my Twitter, Simon. It's pointless, but I'll, I'll plug it anyway. Uh, but um, the mo most of the stuff with our film is Mr. Middle Films, yeah. uh, which is on Instagram and all the stuff to do with this. You can find us on IMDb. You can find us on. Um... Everything's linked on my website, lukeallen.co.uk. Alex. Do you want to say your socials if they um, want it? I, nah, I don't. My I have an Instagram, uh, Riced. That's R I C E D dot B Y dot D A Y L I G H T. You've got to sort that out, man. Yeah, you, 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 I. I you've like... got to sort that. If I could no, quickly, if I could just quickly plug something. Yeah, yeah. Far uh, away. I'm, I'm currently a regular appearance on a radio drama sci-fi oh, wow. series it's called the hawk chronicles and i play an mi6 agent called tony simon and so if you go to google and or whatever search engine you use and just type in hawkchronicles.com takes you straight to the page 
I start on episode 103, and we've just recorded episode 155. Wow. Wow. You know, and, and it's available on all the, you know, Spotify and iTunes and iRadio and all that as well. So. Well, yeah, I mean, we're going to be talking to you guys quite a lot anyway. We get, the whole point of this um, limited series is we're going to be um, following the, the the development of the film, talking to the actors and, um, you know, um, just sort of just monitoring the, and documenting the kind of progress and like you know so to, to, you know getting you as a group together maybe a couple of actors together and you know just sort of every fortnight i think it is luke isn't it i think it's gonna be every fortnight yeah, I think that's what's happening yeah. yeah yeah um so yeah i'm I'm actually really excited it's been a pleasure talking to you simon and you know you're a really interesting guy and you know just just doing a bit of research that i've done today um on yourself i've learned a lot and just talking to you as well has been an absolute pleasure um and I'm really excited to see how this progresses, and um, and you know, seeing seeing you in action, maybe COVID depending, fingers crossed, um, <laughs> we'll be able to get on site and actually do some, um, you know, maybe do some uh, vlog stuff, uh, maybe some, mm. you know, get on site while you're recording, and actually, you know, once you've done a scene, you know, just sort of just some pop boxes, you know, and things like it that. It links to on site if anyone Shrewsbury folk are listening and have a charity shop that we could use for filming. Then uh, get in touch for free. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's very hard to come by. Um, they so. are, yeah, and yeah, absolutely, guys, and you know, everybody that's listening, if you have got access to a shop or, or that kind of, um, uh, of that kind of uh, place, or even just a large hall or something, yeah, that, that we could, could made up, dress, yeah. um, that we could dress, then please either either contact Luke or Alex, um, or or even contact the biscuit, and we'll put you in touch. Um, that'd be massively helpful. Um, these guys are doing this on next to no budget and and you know we want them to do well and they will i'm sure they will even if you know even with or without the help they're going to do well um so it'd be great to give them that um is there anything else you guys want to want to say or you're all happy anything you want to add <laughs> now what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get alex to pop back in again because i need him to do the um to do the shout outs for us because i always mess it up and i never get it right so, <laughs> so i'm gonna get him to come and do that bit i'm getting the staff these days that's what it is right? was... <laughs> shane well done you're doing a great that was amazing uh you did a great job um guys i'd love you know shane just said if you do want to get in touch with the show uh make sure you, you go to our, our website which is the the shoes with biscuit podcast.co.uk you can cut contact us through the website there or you could all just go to our, our gmail which is uh the shoes biscuit uh, shoes with biscuit podcast at gmail.com we would love to hear your suggestions if you do have something that you can help these guys make this film with we would love to hear of you and of course you get lots of audio love in return so uh there's that there as well <laughs> there um, is that uh, the, the Shrewsbury Biscuit is, is actually expanding quite beautifully, actually, after like sort of nearly three years of hard work. Uh, we do have the Shrewsbury Biscuit uh, podcast, which is never going to go. Uh, we have the Virtual Market Showcase, which is every two weeks where we get independent traders to come in and talk about their businesses. It's beautiful uh, sort of uh, forum for, for people to come and just uh, illustrate what they do. You know, independent traders need all, as much help as we can give them at the moment. And so that's what we're doing there. And we also have uh, once a month the open studio sessions uh, where people, anyone, anyone can come and talk to us it doesn't matter what country you're in or where you are what you want to talk about you can just come and sit and simon you're welcome to join us on the open studios yeah whatever you know we can yes. just sit and just chew the fat that's what that's all about chew um, the fat chew the fat I have plenty of fat to chew as well. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah thank you very much guys and uh yeah we'll do this again in two weeks uh this has yeah. been yeah, fantastic yeah uh right peace out peace out, peace out guys <laughs>